Alrighty guys, I'm Orthodon and we are here for Shield Hero The Finale, episode 25. Ah, uh, this has been a good show. Um, I'm sad to see it end, but I'm glad to know that there's more coming, so there, there's that. Um, I will say this, for those of you that may be watching this on Patreon... Next week's episode is supposed to be the first episode of the new show, you know, early access of the new show. It might be one day late, just so you guys know, because I meant to check first, but I didn't. I think I messed up the poll dates a little bit, and I think the poll to replace this ends the day this episode releases. Um, the Or I guess... It would be the day the the first episode of the show on that poll is supposed to release, right? Like, so whatever wins the poll, episode one is supposed to release on my Patreon that week, uh, or on that exact day. So I'm going to have to wait until that day to figure out what it is, and then record and all that stuff, and then get it up the next day. So I think the, the first episode of the next show will be uploaded to Patreon on Friday, and then everything else will go back to normal. From there, it'll go back to Thursdays again, you know, or... No, sorry. Um... No, sorry, this usually uploads... Wait. Am I stupid? No, this usually uploads on Saturdays for you guys. I recorded on Thursdays. Crap, I'm sorry. So, um... I record on Thursdays, it goes to you guys on Friday, I'm scuffing this, and then it, so, so next, so whenever this new show starts, it's not going to show up on Patreon until Saturday instead of Friday for you guys, because I'm going to be delayed by one day, okay? Um, sorry it took me so long to get there. And then for you guys on YouTube, it shouldn't affect you at all, because, uh, it, it's really just the early access stuff, I had the episodes ready to release for YouTube people, so... Apologies that you had to sit there and listen to me fumble my words. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the finale, last episode, we had the uh, the wave start, and we had the betrayal of Lark. We had big reveals of them being apparently characters from, or heroes from another world, which means there's other worlds with heroes that may have been summoned from other worlds. So it's, like, it's mind-blowing. I can't wait to, like, learn more about this. And unfortunately, we're probably not going to get too much more information here. It's probably going to be something we wait for future seasons. So, man. But e anyway, since I've already talked so much, let's jump into the episode and see what happens here. Alrighty, guys. So, like usual, we're timer-based. So get your footage ready to sync with my timer. And we are going to start in 5, 4, 3... Two, one, now. Oh, all the broken boats, injured people. Yep, yep. Yes, the queen and her battle outfit. I love it. Hmm. It's all up to you now for me. Yep, he's fighting glass. The ghosty shield thingy. Ooh, she's scared of it. Why? Hmm. Oh. Compressor bomb. Oh, shit. Her eyes and hair are red again, doing all that stuff. That's cool. I'm so glad that, uh, that one of you guys mentioned that to me in the comments, because I, for some reason, did not notice it. Ooh. Man, I'm kind of, I feel like I missed something. I feel like I'm kind of dumb. 
What what was that blue bubble that was around them? Was that another one of uh, Naofumi's things, or was that something like Melty did? <laughs> mm. I wonder. I wonder, like, it drains SP. I wonder if she has a limited amount of SP or something. Maybe she can't get any more SP while in this world. Maybe she has to retreat back to her world, wherever they come from in these waves, in order to get her SP back. Alright, so they split the party a bit. They got this! It's Raftalia! Yes! And Philo. And Melty. Ooh, yes. A vassal wielder. Hmm. What is that? Is that, like, the true name of their weapons? Hmm. I don't think that really tells us too much. Nice. Okay, good. She's able to do some countering, because before now, for me, just blocked all that stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Tortoise shell cracker! Oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Interesting. Trying to look at everything that's shown up on that HUD. Nay. Ooh. Oh, man. Wow. Now for me, such a good dude, though. He's actually trying to give her a chance to live. Wow. So what is it with the waves? How do they work? What? Whoa. What? So many things. Is that the book that brought him here? Whoa. Whoa! Is that another world? Is that her world? What? Uh oh. Soul soothing potion. Uh oh. Wow, she had to get buffed up in order to fight now for me though. Now for me's a beast. Oh, Raphalia showed up here. What about the other two? Oh, I'm your sword. I love it. 
Whoa, there's music. Oh, I love it. Nice block. Oh, shit. Oh, what the? What is that? Holy crap. God, now for me, so is strong now. Oh, crap. Oh, her. The alcohol water stuff? She tanked it. Damn. Three minutes left. Oh, crap. Uh, damn. Oh, his eyes, look at it, and he has that armor on now, too. Oh! What? What are they doing? What are they doing with those barrels? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, he's resistant to him for whatever reason. Is she just drunk now? <laughs> Is she just drunk now? Okay. He's going to become stronger. <laughs> Damn. I still like Lark and Therese. Even Glass I feel a bit more sympathy for. <laughs> yeah. She did better than the hero she serves under. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, doesn't she serve under, like, the bow hero or something, I think? Oh, we get a little bit of this. That's cool. Oh. Wow, okay. Damn. I would have utilized that crap to the end, in my opinion, but I guess that I gotta think about their mental state, too. Oh, cool, they're fishing. Yeah. So, uh, there's definitely going to be more to that story. Yeah, man, they're Oh. Uh, yeah. 
this is this is that like morality decision that he's gonna have to make. Wow. Ooh. Nice. Damn. Oh, it's her again. No one helped her? What? Oh, she got kicked out of his party. Wow. Oh, she can join them now. Accused of something she didn't do. Now for me already relates. <laughs> wow. Broken accessory. Such a minor reason. Of course it's a girl, too. Now for me, he's just building himself a harem, isn't he? She helped during the, uh, the wave, though. She did pretty good. Yeah. Man, I'm just sitting here thinking about theories of what what could be happening <laughs> with these waves. I have one one theory, but I'll talk about it in discussion. Nice. I ship now for me and the queen. <laughs> ah. What's his, what's his gift? Ah, we don't get to hear it! Oh, are we gonna get to hear it? Oh, come on. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, where are they headed? Hmm. What? Is it like a party for his party? <laughs> hmm. Where are they headed? It's a surprise party. Oh, she's still worried about that. <gasps> Salt in the air? Beach episode! <laughs> Beach party! <laughs> I don't know. Okay, maybe not. 
Are they headed to uh, Rifana's grave, maybe? Uh, this village, okay. Kiel. Oh. Are they, is the queen helping to rebuild this town? Ah. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Trasher, bitch. <laughs> I had to mention them one more time. Ah, cool. Fixing up some boats, getting business going again so they can make some money. Okay, so she didn't, like, pay for them to all be fixed up. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, she was the adventurer that was pretty strong after Naofumi healed her. Oh, it's her, too. Nice. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Oh, is this just wind? Why does this feel ominous? Oh, wow, that flashback when she was younger. Oh, that feels like so long ago for me. Watching this week to week, I mean, I guess it's. 25 weeks ago-ish that I started this. Whoa, that's cool. Ah, oh, that was awesome. Nice. Oh, our origin. <laughs> it's the beginning of the end, and the end of the beginning. Oh. <laughs> They're all just like peeking through the crack. <laughs> Uh, nice.
Oh. Hmm. Whoa. What? What was that? Uh Ah, uh, cool. Get a little bit of, uh... Oh, we get to see, uh... Shoot! I almost said Rafana, but that's not her name. Vittoria, right? Alright. Good, he's training. <laughs> yeah, keep training. <laughs> Just, you gotta listen to some people, too. <clears throat> God damn it, Kitamura. I wonder if Kitamura will ever change her. Hmm. Oh, what's the king up to? Or er, trash, I suppose. Uh, this guy again. Whoa, it's the Queen's people there. What? Hmm. Ah. <gasps> ah, oh. oh, that's the end. Man, that was good. Ah, uh, it felt like a good ending for, like, something that can still have plenty of story, but, but that's the end of Shield Hero, guys. Wow. Okay, so, I, the first thing I want to talk about here is the whole their other world where Glass, Lark, and Teresa are from. We found out that Glass is one of them. That was something I theorized before. She is a hero. They call themselves, um... Was it vassal bearers? Or they have a vassal weapon or something like that? Um, so I wonder if that's the same thing that Naofumi has. So she seems to have the fans, and Lark has his spear thing. And then Therese, she might not be a hero. She might be like a Raftalia to, to uh, Lark. I might be wrong, but she didn't seem to have like an official like weapon, like one of those like vassal weapons. like. Like, now for me, shield and stuff like that. Um, I could be totally wrong about that. Maybe she has something else that gives her the power, and then she uses the jewels to harness it more. Kind of like now for me, feeds stuff to his shield to enhance the power of it and stuff like that. But regardless of that, we have the these heroes from another world that what seemed to happen is they fight waves at the same time in their world as... Now for me and them fight waves. But the thing is, is the first wave, Glass didn't show up. So why didn't Glass show up in the first wave? Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out why Glass needs to come here and kill the heroes. So I was trying to think about why Glass needs to come here and kill the heroes. Maybe when one world has heroes, that, when, or when two worlds have heroes, that's when the... Uh, the waves start. But then I was thinking, if that's the case, if it's when two worlds have heroes that waves start, then why did the waves start? Like, didn't they summon Naofumi and the other heroes here because the waves were coming? Right? So it's like a chicken and the egg situation. If there needs to be heroes in two different worlds for the waves to start, then how did the waves start before they summon Naofumi and the other heroes here to make it so there's two worlds with heroes? Um, that was one of my thoughts, because I was thinking, once Naofumi and them are dead, the waves will stop until more heroes get summoned, you know? But, I don't know. So both worlds are fighting off waves. And she's trying to save her world by killing the heroes here. Hmm. 
but it seemed like she was toying with now for me and seeing how strong he'd get before so why that in the first time that she appeared right wasn't she and now this time she's like all about killing him she didn't seem to have that same drive of like oh i want to you know save my world and stuff like that um she seemed to just be like more into the thrill of the hunt and stuff so one of the other thoughts i had was uh was I wonder if there's, like, someone directing these waves. I've always said that. Like, I wonder if these waves are coming from, like, an evil dimension where there's sentient beings, where I thought Glass was going to be one of them, but apparently she's just trying to defend her own world. So there might still be people we have yet to see that control the waves, you know, that are manipulating them. And I'm wondering if those people went to Glass and Lark and them and said, if you go to this world and defeat the heroes here, we'll stop the waves from affecting your world. You know? And so that's why they're doing it. Because these people have control. But if they're like... Because the thing is, is like, as far as we know, the waves just show up, you know, they have... We get a warning from the Dragon Hourglass things. And they... They are just something that happens, but we don't know, like, why they start. Basically, they just know that they start, they summon heroes to help fight the waves, and stuff like that. And eventually, it seems like they end, because it sounded like there was a long gap between the previous heroes being in the world and when Naofumi showed up. So there is a time period where the waves don't show up. So why didn't the waves show up for a long time? What what is this? Like, it seems like it's more than just, like, a phenomena that happens every, like, century or something, you know? It seems like it's something that might be controlled or manipulated or, like, has some reason for being there, you know? So I still think there's, like, something behind it. Um, or it's, like, a phenomena that happens when, like I said, both worlds have heroes, but then, you know, I'm confused because I felt like the waves were already, like, starting to count down that a wave was going to come before they summoned the heroes, so I don't know. Like, that's, like, that whole chicken and the egg situation, I don't know about that, like, what came first, but, um, man, it's so cool, like, I was a little worried that they weren't going to take, like, a good path with this story, like, this was just going to be a world where this these waves just happened and there's not really any information behind them, you know? Oh, man, I'm about to sneeze. Eh, am I gonna? Yep. <coughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, so the... Yeah, I thought the story was going to be one where it was a little... I I don't know why I thought it was going to be shallower, but uh, a lot of isekais have kind of that thing where they get pulled into the world, and they don't know why, and they never really learn why, right? They just end up living there, you know? Like, some of them you do learn why, and stuff like that. But there's other ones where it's just like, well, whatever, you know? This happened, um... And now you're stuck here. So, and they they usually either don't get enough airtime for it to matter, or, uh, or whatnot. But it, th this one's getting more episodes, which, um, you know, when the show first started, when, because this was voted on by you guys, I was a little bit iffy because we had just, did we start this right after, um... Is this the show that replaced Reincarnated as a Slime? Honestly, I can't remember at this point what show was before this. It might have been Reincarnated as a Slime before this, but either way, I just watched recently Reincarnated as a Slime, so it it was another isekai, so it was a little bit like, eh, like, we have, you know, someone traveling to another world... This is a genre of anime that is starting to get, like, insanely popular, you know? There's 
a lot of them being released, and I, I get a little hesitant, you know, like, we had SAO, which was, you know, the... I liked the first bit when they were in the Sword Art Online world, but as soon as they got out of that and went to, like, Elfheim and stuff like that, I wasn't a fan, and I haven't watched anything really since. I watched everything there was up to Gun... What was it? Gun Gale? Uh, or something like that. And then after that, I haven't watched any of, like... I think there's, like, a SAO allicization, and there's, like, some movies and stuff like that. I haven't watched any of that. I'm not sure how it is. Um, I think there was also a... Um, uh, what are those called for... Kind of, like, when animes get rebooted and like they come out with the first season again but they like rewrite the story oh what is the name of those shoot i can't remember now oh it's on the tip of my tongue either way um i actually haven't watched any shows that have anything like that um i'm not even sure if i'm understanding it right i've only heard other people mention them um but but I think SAO got one of those. And, uh... Man, that, that's bothering me so much that I can't think of the words. But but either way, they... You know, isekais just get me a little worried, especially when I watch too many of them in a row. So I, I, was, I went into this being very skeptical. But I got pulled into it pretty quickly. I was also a little worried about, like, fan service and stuff. Like, uh... Like, the whole... Like, now for me, recruiting, like, a bunch of girls, you know, to his party and stuff like that. Like, the whole harem situation. I do think they... they I think they need, like, a guy in their party consistently just to, like, change up the dynamic a little bit so it's not as much of a harem. But I know a lot of animes like to just fill the main character's party with a bunch of girls, you know? Like, Naofumi does have that little group of soldiers at that one thing, and there's a couple guys in that. Um, but they're not with the party, like, consistently. But now they recruited a new member, and it's that, you know, green-haired girl that I can't remember her name. Uh, I'll have to learn that next season, but... Um... But yeah, so I, I kind of hope they do get a guy in the party. But also, uh, to change up this conversation a little bit, I one thing I did think about in this is it would be kind of cool if Naofumi can somehow talk to, like, Lark at some point in the future and figure out why they need to kill the heroes in this world and maybe, like they learn something that they can use to learn about, like, say there is a greater power controlling these waves, maybe they can try to team up and fight it, you know? That'd be very cool to see, you know... We got to see Naofumi and Lark leveling together, so we did kind of get to see what I'm hoping for, but it'd be really cool for once again to see Naofumi, Lark, Therese, and even Glass maybe team up with them. And, um... Maybe some more heroes. I don't know how their world works, because this world, they have to summon all four heroes at once. Does that mean there's still two more heroes that we haven't seen, assuming that Therese isn't one of the heroes, or one more hero if Therese is, from the other world, from their world? Is there four in each one, you know? Um, so there could be one or two that we haven't seen yet, depending on how all that works. And what happened to them? Are they dead, maybe? Like, are they the only ones left? Is that why they're the only ones attacking? Or, you know, are they... Are the other two headed to another world? Maybe there's a third world. Like, obviously, like, because there's two here doesn't mean that's the only two, you know? So those two could be headed to another world to go defeat those heroes, you know? Um, but it also seemed like Glass was way stronger than... Naofumi was the first time they met, so that could mean that they've been heroes longer. Either that or they just utilize their time a bit better than Naofumi and the other heroes did. So does that mean that they got summoned before Naofumi, or did all of these heroes get summoned at the same time? I wonder if this is just like a historical event where they all get summoned at the same time somehow, but 
it was also something that it wasn't just like sudden like they had to do something in the world to summon now for me and the other heroes because i remember them talking about how um the former king who is now known as trash uh manipulated the or like summoned the heroes all in their country when it was supposed to be four different countries each summoning a hero so they chose to summon them so that means like it would have had to been like a cosmic event that caused like the many worlds to all summon their heroes at the same time even after the intervention of the king summoning them in like you know before they were supposed to be summoned so like that would be like a destiny sort of thing at that point i think because it feels like very coincidental that the all the other worlds decided to summon a little bit early than the king too but it's also possible that i'm completely wrong and they just you know those were summoned earlier that's why glass was stronger she had a little bit more time to train oh i want to know so much more about all this man but I'm going to start talking myself in circles with theories. Those are pretty much all the theories that I can think of that, that could affect this and stuff like that. But um, as for the rest of the episode, it was just really cool seeing them just going around, buying stuff, having a good time and stuff like that. And then they, you know, talked to the queen about the reward and it ended up just being now for me becoming um, lord of the... Was it Lord? Either way, he's like a... He's ruling over Raftalia's town, and maybe it was all of that one dude's uh, territory. He mentioned a name. I can't remember the name. But he basically took... He became Lord of all those uh, areas. So it might be more than just Raftalia's town. I'm not sure. Maybe it is just that town. But there, you know, more people are coming to help fix it up. Especially, like, all the friends that Naofumi made throughout the season, which is really cool. That's, like, a, you know, it's a very cliche thing where you meet all these side characters and, you know, one-off characters throughout the show. And then they show up in the end to just make it, like, mean more and stuff like that. But, um, but that was really cool seeing them all show up and, uh, and all that, so... And they're all fixing up that town, they got the fishing boats going again, you know, Raftalia still has, seems like she has some knowledge from when she was younger, possibly, of how they did their fishing, and now she can teach, you know, the other people that are there, and, um, and then they, I'm sure they sell the fish, you know, and, and then they make some money, which allows them to fix up the town more, you know, participate in the economy of the world and stuff like that, get the trade networks going and everything, which is cool. Uh, I really love some of the shots this episode. Like, when Naofumi somehow, like, had, like, a mental link with Glass and was able to see her world, they were, like, in, like, a samurai world kind of thing, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> they were, like, you know, this is more a fantasy setting, whereas, uh... Whereas that one seemed more, like, historical, like... The, at least from what we saw. I kind of want to go look at that shot again, actually, because I feel like there could be things that we didn't get to see in those shots that were a bit more... And I just realized we didn't get an opening this time. Um, and then the ending was kind of like... That was something... I think the first episode might have did that, where the... Or I think the first episode might have had an opening... Okay, this is all after crap. Um, but yeah, that was cool. They just wanted to give themselves more time. You know, a few extra minutes. Okay, so this is when they throw the push potion. Okay, this is... Is this the other world? A bunch of boats burning, I see. Yeah, that was cool. Now for me, going through, like, he was going through, like, visually going through a tunnel, and we saw, like, the book that I think brought him here, and he was seeing a bunch of different images, and I think, are all of them from this world? Uh... 
Um, yeah, it looks like, I think they're all from Naofumi's world that we, or this, not Naofumi's world, not his home world, but it's a lot of, like, Raftalia, a lot of moments in the show, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, he's basically just, it's kind of like he's analyzing the world that he's been living in and deciding whether he wants to, you know, kill Glass. But then we see, like, a bunch of fish in the water underneath boats. Yeah, and then, okay, so I, now we have, like, some samurai dudes that, like, slash the camera that we got to see. Uh, and there's multiple, too, so it's not just, like, one guy that likes to dress as a samurai. It seems like their world might be more like that. Okay. It's hard to tell. This shot is just a bunch of boats in a in a town burning, you know. Uh, the zoomed out shot with glass over it is just a lot of things being destroyed and burned, and the destruction actually seems way worse than Naofumi's world. Like we did have that one village that burned up earlier in the season, so maybe it's something like that. But I'm surprised. Like, this wave, they held off this wave, I feel, way better than any of the other waves. Like, a lot of, like, the little guys weren't much of a problem, but it seems like they're struggling big time in their world. Yeah, so, ah, oh, the music this episode was so good, too. I loved it. But it was really cool how Nafumi had his, like, normal clothes on, and then it flashed him back into his outfit again, and stuff like that. It was, like... It was kind of like showing him, like, in between worlds and stuff like that, so... But yeah, um... Man, this is a good episode. So there was also... There was also one little moment... I don't know if it was a meta thing or not, right? So towards the end, we had, like, scenes from now for me, like, start to zoom out, and then they turned into, like, a page of a book... And then it, like, fanned through the pages of the book, and then it shut. And it's, like, it's almost like these characters, because, and we had Naofumi brought into this world through a book, so I'm trying to, like, figure out if that's just, like, a meta thing, like, this is the end of the season, you know, one chapter of the book is done, we'll be back for more kind of thing, or is it a story thing where... Maybe as Naofumi is living his life in this world, it's being written on these pages of this book, you know, and are these, like, actual books? Is there gonna be, like, a, you know, library that they go to eventually that is, like, the, maybe the leader of, like, uh, however these waves are being started, if they are being, like, driven by a person or a deity kind of thing or something like that, um, will we show up at, like, a library where, like, Eventually, Naofumi gets to talk to this, like, deity who just, like, pulls his book off of a library shelf, opens it up, and just fans through, like, the history of the show, you know? And it's, like, all of it's been, you know, written and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that'd be kind of a cool idea, but... But, man. Overall, this show has been great. Almost every episode I really enjoy. I was, uh, th so there was a few moments, you know, there was a few episodes where I felt like they were overusing, um, what was her name? Um, bitch. <laughs> I, I, I knew that. I, I was trying to think of her actual name before she, her name got changed from, um, it was, it wasn't Melty. Melty's the, uh, the sister uh, Miney, or something like that, um, there were some times where she was a little bit too antagonistic, I felt like, like, it went on too long, you know, I felt like they could have put it to bed a little earlier, because it wasn't until, like, what, episode, like, 22 or 21 or something around there that they finally had everything come to light about um Miney and stuff and the uh, the king and all that and i felt like that could have been like halfway through the season sort of thing you know like episode 12 or 13 
and then we get the new opening, and then the new focus is on the waves and learning more about that, because I just, I could feel that there was more to the waves, you know, but then, like, me wanting to know more just kind of sullied everything else that was happening, but I guess the fact that we went, like, 21 episodes with the whole Miney debacle made it that much more satisfying, that episode where she just got torn down, you know, and and just had everything stripped away, so that scene might not have been as as fun, you know, but um I loved how earlier in the season we had, you know, Nalfami took everything in stride. He wasn't like depressed like he was upset, but he wasn't like being depressed and useless and whiny, you know? He kind of, like, took all the things that happened to him between, like, the rape accusation and, um, and stuff like that. He kind of took it all and just got shit done, right? He went places and he, you know, threatened people with those little orange ball things and stuff like that in order to get what he wants. He didn't care what people thought about him. He didn't, like try to constantly be good in order for people to, uh, to, you know, maybe change their minds about him. He, what he did was he used, he essentially used force to get what he wanted, but then still gave, which allowed people to realize that he was good, you know, like, um, he'd come up into these situations where he'd force the information out of people but then he'd pay them a reasonable price for things, you know, and stuff like that. He wouldn't just steal it. And, uh, or, like, he, you know, still help people, you know. He'd show up at these villages where people are sick, and he'd heal them all, and they'd say they don't have the money to pay him, and he'd just be like, all right, well, you can pay me later. He wouldn't say that you, you know, don't have to worry about it. It's free of charge. He'd still take the money, but he just says, you know, you can pay me back later and stuff like that, take IOUs and stuff like that, so it was still, like, he was very generous, and he made a name for himself. Rather than taking this crappy situation and trying to fix it, he kind of just went on living his life in this world, and eventually it fixed itself in a way, you know? Uh, so that was, like, a really cool aspect of the story that I feel like, I feel like is something that is not a cliche, right? I feel like there's a different way that characters would handle this story. If I were to, like, guess, if you told me that, like, a character, a main character was accused of rape and it tarnished his name across, like, an entire country, what would he do to get that name back? It would not be what Nalfami did in this show. But what Nalfami did worked, and I loved it. So that was, that was great. Um, oh, man. So, I mean, Raftalia has been great. There were some moments where I was, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, where I was a little bit worried that she was going to be, like, the, you know, lolly, fan service kind of character, you know? And, and then she grew up, and, you know, I... Because obviously there was, like, this attachment between them, you know, before she even grew up. And I never felt that now for me, like, you know, took advantage of that in any way. Even with, uh, even with Philo, you know, there's sometimes where Philo's like, you know, I want now for me to be my mate or something, she said one time. And I'm not the biggest fan of that, you know, but just because it's like awkward with this like little girl talking about that. But I was, you know, worried in the beginning that Rough Talia was going to fall into this weird, like cringy behavior where every time like, they had a moment, I felt awkward about it, you know, but then she grew up, and I, I really ended up, like, loving the way their relationship formed, she had her own, you know, character and personality and stuff like that, where a lot of her story is based around, like, her obvious love for now for me, but she has her own story, too, like, the whole Rifana part and everything was fantastic, and stuff like that that just made her character so much more for me, you know, rather than just, like, this this character that's obviously going to fall in love with the main character, you know? Same with the uh, same with Melty, you know? She's kind of had her own story, even though she has that same, like, 
you know, she obviously blushes and stuff whenever it talks about, like, anything with Naofumi, you know, being close to him in any way, you know, so it is, it is still, like, a harem group that Naofumi has going, but it's not as bad as some groups that I've seen, and it definitely helps that Naofumi, like, isn't really interested in any of them, like, there might be a part of them that's interested in Raftalia now, but I felt like we've earned how much Naofumi is, you know, how, how, I feel like we've earned their relationship, right? And I did mention, you guys, if you've watched this far and you heard me earlier in the reaction, I mentioned that I ship the Queen and Naofumi. Honestly, I still ship the Queen and Naofumi. I think they'd make a power couple. But um, I do think that, obviously, the story is written in a way that we're supposed to root for Naofumi and Raftalia. But but I do feel like we've earned how much I approve of the relationship of Naofumi and Raftalia. It feels like the natural course for relationship. It felt like Naofumi had no interest in Raftalia earlier because he still saw her as this little kid, you know? And in a way, mentally, she might still be, you know? She just suddenly grew up overnight. Like, that's weird. That takes time to process. And it wasn't just like, you know... Um, it wasn't just suddenly she overnight became this adult woman, and now it's like, oh, she's this hot animal girl, you know? Now I love her, you know? It felt like now for me has had the proper time to process that. And even still, like, I don't know... I can't tell, like, in that shot towards the end of the episode, let's see if I can open it, um, where they were all on the roof, did they kiss? Like, it looked like, it looked like they were very close, the camera angle kind of begged the question when everyone came through the door, right? Um... Man, that was really cool, actually, to, to pause real fast on that other conversation. When Naofumi was standing in the streets of his old world and saw himself as a shield hero walk by, I think that was a moment when he really realized like how much he's grown from his person back in that world. And I think if he ever has a decision to leave this world, he's not gonna. Even though there's been multiple times where he said he's gonna stay here, there's other times where he said he's gonna go back. I don't know, like what he's really thinking and stuff like that, but all those flashbacks are really cool and stuff like that. I loved how this ended. Yeah, no, they're they're kissing, right? They're kissing for sure. I think, right? It's very possible that's just a hug. But they're both blushing. I mean, I guess they were hugging when they showed up. I don't know. What What do you guys think? For those of you that listened this far, what do you guys think? Were they hugging or were they kissing? I don't know. Um, I It's hard to tell with that camera angle. It's very well that his head could be over his her shoulder a little bit, but her hair is in the way, so you can't tell. But it also looked like, you know, it, it's possible that they kissed. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I can't tell if Naofumi has any romantic feelings for uh, Raftalia at this moment in time. But, um, but yeah, that was a very good ending. I don't know, like, I think it might have also been symbolism when the wind blew and the pages were flapping on that book. It was like another symbolism of book, you know? I don't know if they're trying to tell us something, if it's like... Just, you know, the end of this chapter, if it's symbolizing that because of the show's ending for now? Or is it trying to warn us that, you know, maybe books have something to do with, like, this whole big mystery? I don't know. But, but yeah, guys, I think that's kind of all I gotta say for this episode. Um, pretty, pretty good discussion. But I guess this episode and the show as a whole. Uh, I'm not sure... I'm not sure when... I'm going to be watching the next season of this show, but I'm going to try to make it so we don't have to watch, um, so we don't have to have polls for sequels that of reactions I've done, right? 
So, like, when My Hero starts up again, like, we only have one more episode of My Hero that I have to watch at this point in time that I'm recording this. Um, that's gonna end, and then when that comes back, I wanna watch it. When this comes back, I wanna watch it. I think I got a notification that, um... Reincarnated as a Slime is getting another season, too. Um, that's gonna be coming as well. When all this stuff happens, when more seasons come for these shows I've watched on the channel, I do wanna watch them. I just don't know how I'm gonna fit that in. I'm not sure, like, the best way to do that. Because, like... Either I gotta start a whole nother slot, or I gotta wait for one of the shows to end and just not do a poll and throw this in instead, you know? And then I'd be a little bit later. But I'd kind of want to watch it while it's airing, too. It's gonna be weird. I'll have to see, like... I'll, I'll probably just have to make a decision when the time comes, you know? And see where I am in my shows, you know? And what airs at the same time. Like, Reincarnate as a Slime could air in the same season that this season, you know, gets more and stuff like that and and all that, but I don't know. Um, but I definitely do want to watch this, preferably while it's airing, so we can talk about it, like, episode to episode for those of you who are waiting for the anime that have not read the manga and don't have any, like, spoilers. We could have, like, conversations each episode, you know, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. We'll see in the future whenever it becomes a problem, when one of these shows I've watched gets a sequel and stuff like that, but... But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this whole series with me, if you stuck with me through the whole thing. Um, I very much appreciate it. Hopefully you look forward to whatever's coming next, which I don't know yet. The poll isn't done. Um, at least at the time that I'm recording this, the poll isn't done. By the time you're seeing this, like, on YouTube, I guess the poll is probably over. Um... But I'll probably try to do an announcement video announcing what wins each of the polls and stuff like that. So that'll be pretty cool. We'll uh, we'll see what happens there. And uh, yeah, guys, like usual, hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this content. That way you can see all the new content that comes from me. And then you can also check out my Patreon if you want access to the Patreon-only shows, which as soon as the new show that replaces this slot starts, I'll be starting Patre a Patreon show as well, which is a, a show that only airs on Patreon. You also get early access and stuff like that on there. So if you want that, you can check that out at patreon.com slash morthodon, or you can go into the description where there is a link that you can just click to get there. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my other reactions and whatever show replaces this if you guys watch that too. Bye-bye, guys.